Chapter 65. How the passions of the mind can work out of themselves upon an author's body. The passions of the soul which follow the fantasy, when they are most vehement, cannot only change their own body, but also can transcend so, as to work upon another body, so that some wonderful impressions are thence produced in elements, and extrinsic all things, and also can so take away, or bring some disease of the mind or body. For the passions of the soul are the chiefest cause of the temperament of its proper body. So the soul being strongly elevated, and inflamed with a strong imagination, sends forth health or sickness, not only in its proper body, but also in other bodies. So Avicen is of the opinion, that a camel may fall by the imagination of any one. So he which is bitten with a mad dog presently falls into a madness, and there appear in his urine the shapes of dogs. So the longing of a woman with child, doth act upon an author's body, when it signs the infant in the womb with the mark of the thing longed for. So, many monstrous generations proceed from monstrous imaginations of women with child, as Marcus Damasenius reports that at Petra Sancta, a town situated, situated, upon the territories of Pisa, viz. A wench that was presented to Charles, Charles, king of Bohemia, who was rough and hairy all over her body, like a wild beast, whom her mother affected with a religious kind of horror, horror, upon the picture of John Baptist, which was by her bed, in time of conception, afterwards brought forth after this fashion. And this we see is not only in men, but also is done amongst brute, brute, creatures. So we read that Jacob the patriarch, with his speckled rod set in the watering places, did discolour the sheep of Laban. So the imaginative powers of peacocks, and other birds, whilst they be coupling, impress a colour upon their wings. Whence we produce white peacocks, peacocks, by hanging round the places where they couple, with white clothes. Now by these examples it appears how the affection of the fantasy, when it vehemently intends itself, doth not only affect its own proper body, but also in authors. So also the desire of witches to hurt, doth bewitch men most perniciously with steadfast, steadfast, looks. To these things of Isn, Aristotle, Algazel, and Galen assent. For it is manifest that a body may most easily be affected with the vapour of an author's diseased body, which we plainly see in the plague, and leprosy, leprosy. Again, in the vapours of the eyes there is so great a power, that they can bewitch and infect any that are near them as the cockatrice, or basilisk, killing men with their looks. And certain women in Scythia, amongst the Illyrians, and tribally, killed whomsoever they looked angry upon. Therefore let no man wonder that the body, and soul of one may, in like manner be affected with the mind of another, seeing the mind is far more powerful, strong, fervent, and more prevalent in its motion than vapours exhaling out of bodies, neither are the wanting mediums, by which it should work. Neither is an author's body less subjected to an author's mind, than to an author's body. Upon this account they say, that a man by him affection, and habit only, may act upon another. Therefore philosophers advise, that the society of evil, and mischievous men must be shunned, for their soul being full of noxious rays, infects them that are near with a hurtful contagion. On the contrary, they advise that the society of good, and fortunate men be endeavoured after, because by their nearness they do us much good. For as the smell of a safetida, a safetida, or musk, so of bad something of bad, of good something of good, is derived upon them that an eye, and sometimes continues a long time. Now then if the foresaid passions have so great a power in the fantasy, they have certainly a greater power in the reason, inasmuch as the reason is more excellent than the fantasy, and lastly, they have much greater power in the mind, for this, when it is fixed upon God for any good with its whole intention, doth oftentimes affect an author's body as well as its own with some divine gift. By this means we read that many miracles were done by Apollonius, Pythagoras, Empedocles, Philolaus, and many prophets, and holy men of our religion. But of these more fully in the following chapters, where we shall discourse of religion.